Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be listening to the audio recording of Direct D's sentencing hearing, which was illegally recorded, by the way. Now, I have some strong feelings about this issue because of my experiences with people like him over the years. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my take on his sentencing hearing. My turn. Mr. Ruff, uh, this is your opportunity to speak if you wish to do so. You well, don't have to make any statement, obviously, as you are aware. Oh, we're on the record. I'm going to make some statements. No, I understand, Mr. Ruff. I expected that you did, but I just wanted to let you know that you don't have to speak, but if you choose to speak, now would be that time, sir. Excellent. So, we're talking about jail. Jail, inappropriate. There's no victims in any of these cases. Police officers cannot be victims of a crime unless they were injured or robbed from. So, jail is kind of out of the question. Besides, I'm about to have a baby in the next couple of days. I'm the sole provider of my household. So, jail is would be uh, immoral to for a judge in your position to sentence somebody like me to. No, what the moral thing to do was to consider the consequences to your actions rather than acting as you did. And having a bit of self-reflection never hurts either. To understand where you went wrong and correct the mistake and not pass it on to your children as you are about to do. Um, I think that your rulings have been erroneous and outside of the Constitution of the United States. I think you are operating outside of your oath of loyalty office to the United States Constitution and the Arizona uh, Constitution. I think the prosecutor has made uh, false claims against me that I'm aware of my actions being illegal, that I did things intentionally. Those are claims with no basis to them, no foundation and no proof, but yet here we are on the record and you're allowing a prosecutor to make those claims. So, whatever. I don't personally care what you sentence me to. I'm appealing everything today, so it's gonna freeze whatever you appeal, whatever you sentence me to, and we're just gonna kick it to a higher court. Because clearly this one is corrupt. Your strings are being pulled by somebody else outside of this city or in the city. Maybe the city council, Chris Brady's maybe telling you what to do. Maybe your uh, judges or friends with the police out on the street. There's an old saying, claims require evidence, and extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. What evidence do you have to support the extraordinary claims that you have presented in this rambling? I mean, besides baseless conspiracy theories and a massive persecution complex. Go on, tell us what you know. Tell us what you have. You think I'm harassing people. You think I'm doing things because I'm allowed to do it or I want to do it. It's the First Amendment. I am allowed to walk around and film things. I am allowed to swear in front of a police officer in a pro close proximity. It's called the First Amendment, freedom of speech and protest. You cannot criminalize that, but here we are in a joke municipal court and you just criminalized it and you're about to sentence me. So have fun. You guys are both traitors to the Constitution and the United States. Sentence me to whatever you want. I'm appealing it. I'll go pay for the record and walk out of here. This is going to go to an appellate court. It's going to go to the Supreme Court. It's going to go to the Superior Court. I have money and time. I'm not going to just stick around and be on probation or go to jail. I did absolutely nothing wrong. You allowed fake evidence to be introduced. You allowed the prosecutor to make false statements during trial. So many mistakes were made. Now that is an extraordinary claim and it's going to require extraordinary evidence to back it up. I mean, what is the basis for this claim anyway? How do you know if the evidence was faked? By what method was it faked? Who faked it? Why they faked it? When they faked it? All sorts of questions need to be answered. And why was this not brought up in the trial itself if you thought all the evidence was fake? Why did you wait till now to bring it up? Mr. Ruff, I, I appreciate the fact that you are going to appeal. That is certainly your right. Absolutely. I would like you to... What? Well, that's fine. I, I was hoping that you would confine your arguments to what you believe your sentence should be. I don't care what the sentence is going to be. I'm going to appeal it. I'm never going to do the time. All right. By all means, you can file the appeal. But that still doesn't mean you're going to win or not serve any time. And in fact, if this audio recording gets the judge, 
you may be serving more time. Judges that are actual judges, not appointed fake judges that can't represent anybody are going to make real decisions on you, on your mistakes. People are going to know that you guys tried to fuck with me in court. Mr. Ruff, hmm. I'm going to ask that you refrain from the statements that you are making from your obscenities here in this court and your use of language. You are in the courtroom. Okay. I'm not going to allow you to use that kind of language. That's First Amendment. Mr. Ruff, no, you don't have a right to go into court. I don't have a First Amendment court. right in court. Mr. Ruff, you have a First Amendment right. You don't have a right to go into court and disrespect the court. Saying the fuck is not disrespectful, Mr. sir. Ruff, if you do it again, you may be going to jail today. Do you understand this? Oh, sir? I absolutely understand. Because I have, I, I, I have the power to hold you in contempt, which I do not want to do. I'm asking you to refrain from using that sort of language in a courtroom. It's not appropriate, Mr. Ruff. You may think that it's appropriate to come in and use that sort of language in a courtroom, but it is not, sir. So you would abuse your authority if I exercise my right. You, I'm not, I'm, it's I'm an abuse of authority. There is a lot to unpack about what was just said. The use of the word fuck in certain contexts can be disrespectful. Such as in one context where you are working a retail job like at Walmart, you cannot use profanity on the sales floor at all. Because certain profane words are considered to be offensive by certain individuals. If these individuals hear you using that profane language, they can go to your manager and they can get you at the very least coached and maybe fired. But in all my time at Walmart, I never heard anything about anybody being fired due to profanity. To, to please refrain from using that kind of language in the courtroom. You're supposed to be impartial and fair. I'm using a word to emphasize my sentences, which is a First Amendment protected right. I can do that. You are entitled to do that. You're not allowed to swear and use obscenities in court because you are upset. Cohen v. Man. California would disagree with you. Nope, that's not what the ruling said. In fact, the judge can have a code of conduct in the courtroom. Okay. That's Supreme Court case law, landmark. Mr. Ruff, are you done? I'm done. I've been done. I'm just waiting for you to sentence me. Mr. Pamui, I think you're... I understand your argument, Mr. Pamui, but... I think when you talk about your client changing his behavior, clearly the display of what is continuing shows that he doesn't want to change his behavior. It's, no. it's very clear. Mr. Ruff, the court takes into consideration in your case, I know, Mr. Ruff, that I have to look at it, and I have looked at it, Mr. Ruff. I'm aware that you were, that you actually pled guilty. You didn't go to trial. You pled guilty to armed robbery. Dangerous. Because I was wrong. You're right. I did it. And you went to, hang on, Mr. Ruff, it's my turn now. I'm going to ask that you refrain from speaking. I let you speak. Now you, now you need to be quiet. Okay. You went to seven years of DOC. You were placed on three years of probation subsequent to that. <laughs> you guys are going to sentence me to jail. Great. Gee, what happened to all the bravado you showed earlier? In terms of the First Amendment, I think the prosecution is correct in their statements, Mr. Ruff, that the police... Really, their concern is when it can be the safety of themselves and safety of others, especially when they're trying to do investigations. And the fact that you would have just shown up and recorded is one thing. The fact that you would retort and say the things you did is another. You escalated things. You escalated things and you did it purposely and you did it intentionally. Are you making claims from the bench? Mr. Ruff, I'm asking you to refrain. Making claims from the bench? Making claims from the bench? What the hell does that mean anyway? All the claims and evidence have been presented. You've been convicted, so therefore it's been proven. And thus he is going off what has been presented and proven in the court. Mr. Ruff, I'm asking you to refrain. Are you, are you wanting me to find you in contempt? Are you asking me to do that? I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm asking you to be quiet. Okay. <laughs> You went beyond that. The video that, that I looked at, I looked at it several times, where you approached the officers and would yell in their faces and say the things you did, especially when there was a group of people. And I could see the officer walking away. And it was clear that the officer had concerns for his safety, um, which they're, they're taught to do. Anytime there's a group like this involved, they, they, are, they are trained and taught to be aware of their surroundings. And things were escalating. 
Uh, Mr. Roth, I think what is really clear is you may not recall, I recall, I remember the things that you said in your closing statement here, and I think I think you believe that that is constitutionally protected speech, and I'm going to respectfully disagree with you. But wait, I, I heard a lot of talking heads tell me I could do this kind of thing and get away with it. I thought it was going to be easy. But your conduct, Mr. Ruff, goes to another level. It just went to another level in these cases. Um, it, it incited the crowd, and I understand that you may be doing this for, for recording purposes, and there is no problem with you merely showing up and recording. That's never an issue. It's what you do while you're recording. It's getting into the faces of these individuals, and inciting the crowd, and that's what I saw in the last case. I thought it was egregious. You could clearly tell the officer was concerned as he was walking back to his car. So while there is a First Amendment right, Mr. Ruff, sometimes when you're placed on probation, you lose your rights. Exactly, Judge. That's the whole crux of the argument. There's nothing wrong with recording in public. It's just that there are certain times, places, and situations where you can't do it, and the conduct of these people is often the problem. Getting into people's faces and deliberately causing an issue becomes a major concern. That is the case of failure to obey, to obey a police officer. You were found guilty of that matter. I'm giving you 90 days of jail. 90 days of jail will be postponed. I'm placing you on probation for 24 months. You are directed to do counseling. I'm sending you to Prodigy Healthcare to do counseling. You are to contact them within two business days to set up that counseling. In the case of 2021-043799, I am not going to place you on probation for that criminal trespass case. However, Mr. Ruff, in light of the fact that I know you had a total of six cases and I realized that two of them were dismissed, so I'm not taking those into consideration, but the fact that you continue to pick up these cases and that your behavior hasn't been changed or modified um, I just, <clears throat> I do believe that jail time is warranted, Mr. Ruff. It's based upon your prior criminal history. It's based upon the number of cases that you picked up in this court. It's based upon the conduct that you continue to show and the disdain that you continue to show, not only this court, but others. For that reason, Mr. Ruff, I'm, I'm, I did find you guilty. I'm imposing five days of jail. See? Those five days are straight time. In the case of 2021-063564, does enter a judgment of guilt for that criminal trespass charge. I am placing you on probation in that matter for 12 months. I am giving you five days of jail. Again, those five days of jail will run. Um, it'll be a straight time, no two for one. That will run concurrent with the five days of jail in 2021-043-799. In the case of 2021-071040, Mr. Ruff, I'm placing you on probation. The court does enter a judgment of guilt to the offense of disorderly conduct as a class one misdemeanor and trespassing as a class one misdemeanor. Um, 180 days of jail, 180 days will be suspended, uh, three years of probation, and I am ordering counseling, I am ordering that you do anchor management on the trespass charges, 30 days jail, 30 days suspended, 12 months probation. So most of his time was suspended in favor of probation. Three years of probation. I've known a few people over the years who've gotten that much probation and more. They generally don't last that long. I have seen so many people go back out on the street and within a few weeks or a few months, they violate their probation and end up going to prison. I have absolutely no confidence in a man like this to complete out his probation. I have yet to see anybody like him do that. That's at least my personal experience. That, and Mr. Ruff, as to the matters that you are being placed on probation for, and the failure to, put, to obey a police officer, and in this matter, Mr. Ruff, as a term and condition of your probation, I'm directing that you shall not go to areas where the Mesa Police Department are conducting an investigation. That you shall not record any members of the Mesa Police Department while you are on probation. That is the order of this court. And I know, Mr. Ruff, that you believe that you have a First Amendment right, and people do have rights to record. But when you violate those rights in the nature and the way that you did, Mr. Ruff, I believe it is an appropriate term of probation. 
given, given the nature and the contact that you had with the officers and the things that you were saying to them. And again, this is in light, especially of the last case where I watched that video over and over of your conduct and what you did. It hurt your feelings. And so for that reason, Mr. Ruff, if you violate these terms and conditions of probation, please understand that there is a substantial amount of jail time hanging over your head, sir. Oh, judge just hit him hard. You can't film any cops, otherwise you're going to get some serious prison time. But given how you are and given the experiences that I've seen with people on probation, they go back to what they were doing before and do it all over again. It's just a vicious cycle. You will be in prison shortly. I do not want to impose that, Jim. I want you to change your behaviors. That's the whole point of this, Mr. Rock. It doesn't <laughs> seem like you are interested in doing that. I'm certainly hoping, sir, that you would take into account that when you did say that you're going to be a father soon again, and I'm hoping that you would take that into account and that somehow, sir, that you would change your behaviors and see that this is just, it's not conducive uh, to um, yourself, sir, in terms of, in terms of, Mr. Ruff, courts don't want to lock you up. I know that you feel that somehow okay. this is what's happening, Mr. Ruff. I was really hoping that you would come in here today with a different attitude. This is a joke. I understand that you feel that way, Mr. Ruff. You're there's, sensitive about my language? And, and your there, sensibilities? And, Mr. Ruff, there isn't anything mm. I can do to change it, and I'm realizing nope. that as I'm sitting here. 33. So, um, so there isn't anything else that I can say to you, Mr. Ruff. Um, so those are the orders of this court. Now my feelings about this are as follows. As I have stated before, I have no confidence that he will even complete the probation. I have seen it way too many times to be confident in that. He will violate his probation and he will serve out his time or a lot more depending on the circumstances. Because people like him rarely change if ever at all.